All right, so lately I've been doing touch-ups outdoors because as you guys know, I use Liquin uh, fast drying medium and it sort of has a toxic smell. So I don't like using it in the studio. So today I'm out in my uh, sort of cafe here doing touch-ups. Uh, let me give you a little tour. I've got my computer and backpack with my supplies in it. And I've set up my Anderson easel outdoors here and just got my normal outdoor setup. Uh, working on this picture of Stowe Lake. I uh, just finished it up and I uh, got my big brush cleaner down here on a little stool. All right, so we'll just do today's Q&A right here in my outdoor studio. Uh, first question is, uh, where can we buy the paintings we see in your videos? Um, I will leave my email in the description below, but typically uh, the paintings go off to galleries. There's a couple galleries that I show at in the Bay Area here. A studio Gallery in San Francisco, Elliot Fouts Gallery, Sacramento, and Show Gallery in Berkeley. Um, but I also often have a lot of the paintings here, so if you email me, um, I can uh, tell you where the paintings are and give you the details and that sort of thing. Uh, let's see, how do I use Liquin? And, um, I've talked about Liquin a lot in my videos. You've probably seen me using it. And I just use Liquin the way you would use any other medium. And for people who don't know what medium is, um, it's when the paint comes out of the tubes, it's rather stiff and thick. And so to be able to make it more workable and to you know, be able to spread quickly on your canvas, you need something to thin the paint. Uh, if you thin it with odorless mineral spirits, you're gonna be breaking down the binder um, not to get too technical, but basically what paint is made of is particles of pigment that are held together by some sort of binder, which is usually linseed oil or uh, I think there's other oils. I think safflower oil too. But anyway, so it's safflower oil or linseed oil and pigment. But when you thin that paint with odorless mineral spirits, you're compromising the binding ability of the oil. So. You want to thin your paint with something that's not going to destroy the binder or actually will contribute to it. So you want to put something like uh, Liquin is, uh, it's actually like, uh, I'm not even sure what it's made of, but I'm assuming it's some sort of polymer or plastic. <laughs> but in any case, uh, it acts as a binder too, but it thins the paint so you can make it more workable. And what I usually do with it is I just, I have a little cup, a little palette cup, and then I just dip into it and work it into, uh, work it into the paint using my brush. Uh, like I said, just the way you'd use medium, um, any other medium. All right, so let's see what else. What do I want for Christmas? Um, you know, I don't really want anything for Christmas that I can think of. Um, I think and my daughter asked me if, what I wanted for Christmas and I said, just, you can just get me some good coffee. It's funny how like, food, somebody could actually buy me a bag of like really nice apples and I'd be happy. Um, I guess it's all relative. I just like spending time with friends and family and just, I think that's my most, that's the favorite thing about the holiday. Um, so yeah, and I'm not good at shopping for gifts. Like I'm terrible at that. Um, so, I like to make gifts. I do that often. I've given paintings as gifts or, or I'll make something out of wood or, or whatever. But uh, yeah, shopping, it's weird. It's not, I don't like shopping. It's not that I don't want to give something to somebody. It's just, I don't like going to stores. <laughs> I don't like going to malls or stores. I guess I can shop online. I think I need to get into that. Anyway, okay, uh, let's see. Where do I get my inspiration? This is sort of a recurring question. Um, I think, uh, I think I mostly get my inspiration just from, I do get it from looking at paintings a lot. I mean, lately that's been kind of the case. I look at as many paintings as I can and try to see them in person. I find the most inspiring thing of all is to go to museums or, I'd say museums more than galleries. Um, I find them more inspiring. It's kind of interesting to see paintings that were painted a long time ago that still feel relevant now. Um, uh, whereas when you're in a gallery, a lot of times, uh, it's kind of hard to tell how those paintings are going to be, like, how they'll be seen over time. Um, 
but a lot of the paintings that have in other words if you go to a museum and there's a painting there and it looks good and it was painted 60 or 70 years ago or 100 years or 200 whatever then there's something timeless that that artist has captured um, and sometimes it takes a while to be able to see that. Now there's plenty of paintings that were painted a hundred years ago or 50 years ago that just look dated and don't look, uh, you know, it's so I'm sure there's a lot of paintings in galleries right now that 50 years from now or 25 years from now are going to look like, you know, of the times. So maybe, who knows, maybe it's if a painting is too style heavy, you know, in other words, it's like, oh, that painting is so 2018, you know. Um, I think there's some truth to that. So anyway, I like to go to, I like to, go to um, museums and, and uh, there's another thing too that's different I've noticed. When you go to museums, the work tends to be uh, oftentimes maybe a little rougher or more, it's less finished. Um, but when you go, and, and I like that, I tend to like something that's maybe painted in a bold way and there's some imperfections or it seems like like for gallery work you're maybe you're sort of catering to a buying public and so there is that tendency to want to take that painting to the next level like or a finish anyways and sometimes I think that's not so good I felt that pressure myself is to kind of clean something up uh, whereas I think some of the paintings I've seen in museums have been maybe a little less polished and they've left some of that chaos in there which I actually really appreciate anyway so yeah that's where I get lately I've been getting most of my inspiration from museums okay let's see what else we have here uh, why do I hold the brush the way I do so yeah I hold the brush like this when I'm painting and as you notice brushes have long handles the idea apparently was is that you stand back from your canvas and you can, because that way you can see your painting. Um, if you're too close to it, you get too bogged down in details. But so that's the reason they put a long handle on the brush is so you can stand back and that is the way you hold the brush. That's the way you're supposed to hold it. Um, at least I remember reading about that, you know, like you guys know, I'm self-taught or whatever and most of the information I got was from books. But I saw that, you know, they say, hold your brush like this, you know. And uh, it took me a couple of years to feel comfortable with that. Um, at first it seemed really awkward, I guess because we're so used to holding things like, you know, like a pencil or a pen. Um, so I just gave up trying because it felt so awkward. And then a strange thing happened. It just happened naturally. Um, it just sort of started making sense at some point, probably two or three years into my, well, maybe even sooner than that, maybe a year into my painting, especially when I started painting um, plein air paintings, larger plein air paintings. I realized the advantage of being able to get back from your painting and not be right up close on it. So that's why I hold my brush that way. Uh, let's see here, what paint do I use? Um, I use mostly Utrecht brand paint, but I would just suggest experimenting. I've also used other brands as well. I've used uh, Gamblin brand and I've tried Grumbacher when I first started and what else? Um, I've used, oh, uh, Windsor & Newton has a student line of paints that's actually quite good. Um, I use that, I still use their titanium white, uh, Winton brand titanium white. It's really nice, nice quality paint. Um, and I use their tight I use their ultramarine blue as well so but basically you know I mean if it's a reputable brand and I think you can't really go wrong I think I use Utrecht because it's high quality um, and it's affordable um, so that's kind of why I go that way but you know I know a lot of painters that use gambling and other things if you're painting like I do where you're going through a lot of paint it can be if you I wouldn't use some expensive paint because it would just kind of stymie my my creativity um, I like to there's an old saying saying that you should squeeze out a ton of paint and paint like a millionaire or squeeze out a ton of paint and then use it all um, and I try to kind of I try to do my best to adhere to that um, so if you if you're squeezing out really expensive paint you know you may get 
you may start getting stingy with it. So I try to use the best quality at the best price and I'd say like Gamblin and Utrecht and uh, Winton brand are, are paints that you know satisfy that need. So those are the ones I use. Um, why do I always start a painting at the end of the day? Wouldn't it be better to give myself more time? And yeah, so that's true. Uh, I do tend to get out and and paint at the end of the day, but you know the the painting trip usually starts around noon. See, I have a morning routine that I like. Um, I'm not somebody who can just wake up and feel like heading out at the crack of dawn and painting. Uh, I have days like that, but not usually. I'm I'm sort of more a midday painter, uh, and I can work on that, but. You know, so far there's been no real real need to. Um, and uh, so basically my routine in the morning is I'll wake up, uh, make some coffee, have breakfast, and then lately I've just been playing guitar and singing songs, writing songs and whatever for sometimes three hours, like say from nine to noon. And I'm just kind of feeling that right now, so that's what I'm doing. And, um, and then you know and then around noon then I'll maybe eat lunch and then I'll head out the door and um, oh, while I'm eating lunch usually I'll look on the computer and maybe see if I could find a place a new place to paint um, and maybe I'll look at paintings online to get some inspiration or ideas um, and then uh, then I'll head out and usually the filming is what kind of takes a lot of time so you know, I'll walk around and I'll film some scenery shots to use as transitions. And um, this also helps me kind of get an idea of what I might want to paint. So uh, I just take my time out there because, you know, uh, especially with the video process, I usually take my time with that. And, um, and then I'll talk to you guys periodically and just say what I'm doing. Um, and then with days like this when it's getting dark, it, like right now it's like 3.30 and it's almost dark. So I don't usually have this problem. I only have this problem in December and maybe January, but that's it. Uh, when the days are super short. But I will say this, I don't mind being rushed. In fact, I think I've done some of my best work when I'm sort of racing with a setting sun. Um, I do like to paint fast, spontaneously, you know, and not overthink things, not overwork things. Um, it's like I'll spend time kind of concocting a good composition in my head, which I'm finding is more and more important. Uh, maybe not to all painters, but to me, that's the thing I really want to, uh, I found that's really important to me. Um, if I have a good composition, even if the painting is just kind of sketched on there and dashed on with a lot of energy and not a lot of, of you know, uh, sort of detail, like it can be really sloppy, but if that composition is good and there's good energy in it, then I tend to like that painting uh, for a long time, like, you know. But some of the other paintings that maybe even I, you know, there was some nice finesse in the brushwork or this or that, if the composition's not good, then the painting does not wear well and it's not something that I'll like into the, di into the future. So I'm really trying to figure out how to study composition and kind of form my own ideas about composition. Uh, and maybe I'll do a video about composition in the future. Composition's something that I think is really hard to communicate and talk about. Uh, and so I've looked at certain books. I know a lot of people recommend Edgar Payne's uh, Composition of Outdoor Painting, and I've, I have that book. I've not been able to get anything really of value out of it. I mean, maybe a little bit looking at the pictures, but it's mostly just drawings, and I don't know. I think you kind of got to figure it out yourself in a way. Um, but anyway, maybe if I can find a way to communicate that, I'll do a, a video about composition in the future. Okay, so the last question is, do I have any advice about marketing artwork? Uh, it's interesting, I was just thinking about this. I just did a, like a private fundraiser um, where I brought a bunch of my paintings down to a house in Woodside, uh, which is a, a town just south of San Francisco. And, um, and so I brought all my paintings in there and then and there was also a photographer who was, um, also brought his work. And so we had this fundraiser for Peninsula Open Space Trust, which is like in order to buy land around the Bay Area so it can't be built on, so it preserves it as open space. Anyway, so we were doing this show and there were a lot of people that um, 
that bought the paint my paintings and some of the photographs um, that are sort of you know people who are art collectors who have some pretty substantial pieces of art and uh, it got me thinking I'm not the type of person who would market my work in, in, in this way well let me explain one thing that is in the art world there's something called provenance or something like that I believe I don't think I'm maybe I'm not pronouncing it correctly but the idea is is that an artist's value goes up depending on which collections um, his work is a part of or his or her work is a part of so in other words if you have like you know like say your work is a part of some very you know uh, uh, how shall we say this, elite collections, then the value of your work goes up. But in order to sort of um, have that happen, you have to like sort of advertise the fact that you're part of these different collections. And I've never been comfortable with that sort of idea. Um, anyway, okay, so ideas on marketing. Um, that is one form of marketing where you're trying to you know, market yourself as somebody who's in museums, is a part of these exclusive, you know, collections. Uh, maybe you're going to talk about your art education. You're going to, in other words, there's one form of marketing that is about all kinds of other stuff besides the work. Do you know what I'm saying? In other words, it's the school you went to, it's the collections you're in, it's the museums you're in, it's the awards you've won, it's all that stuff that is what creates the value of your piece not the piece itself necessarily but all of that other stuff that's a, that surrounds your work uh, like I said I've never felt comfortable with that form of marketing um, the reality is the people that do that kind of thing and play that kind of game tend to get in the galleries that also play that game and will also push your work in that direction you tend to get a lot more money for your work if you uh, market in that way. I've never felt comfortable with that. Um, my work tends to sell just because of what it is, even to people who don't know who I am and have never seen my work before. To me, I find that satisfying. So my idea has always been just create the best work that I possibly can, present it in an honest way at prices that I feel are fair. And, um, and that's it so I'm not really good at marketing actually um, I think you know basically you can you know just social media that sort of thing but I do feel like it's a kind of an occupation where bragging and sort of boosting yourself up is um, is beneficial again I've never felt comfortable with that I figure you know if I'm part of these collections the word will get out eventually and whatever so uh, but anyway, that's just about my take on things. Um, like I said, no expert on marketing. And it's constantly evolving. Like these days, you know, there's a, there's a lot of evolution in how people can market their work. So uh, anyway, that's it pretty much here today. I'm just um, going to finish up. I'm feeling a few raindrops, actually. Uh, it's comfortable here, though, in the Bay Area. It's not like, I mean, it's overcast. But it's probably about 60 degrees, so it's kind of nice painting outdoors like this. Um, and I had some I had some Christmas music going on uh, first time this year, actually. I got to the 23rd of December without listening to any Christmas music, and I was like, okay, i got to put on some Christmas music. So, yeah, it was nice working out here today. Anyway, um, so that is the... Uh, Q and A, December Q and A, holiday edition. Uh, not much holiday stuff, but hope you guys have a good holiday if you're celebrating. And uh, I will see you in the next video.